Question 16. How are subnets used to improve network security? Answer. Subnets improve network security and performance by arranging hosts into different logical groups. Subnetting is required when one network address needs to be distributed across multiple network segments. Subnetting is required when a company uses two or more types of network technologies like Ethernet and Token Ring. Question 17. What does your network security architecture diagram look like? Answer. The first thing you need to know to protect your network and systems is what you are protecting. You must know the physical topologies, logical topologies, Ethernet, ATM, 802.11, VoIP, ETC, types of operating systems, perimeter protection measures, firewall and IDs placement, ETC, types of devices used, routers, switches, ETC, location of DMZ's IP address ranges and subnets use of NAT in addition, you must know where the diagram is stored and that it is regularly updated as changes are made. Question 18. What security measures are in place for in-house developed applications? Answer. Any development that is taking place in-house should include security from the beginning of the development process. Security needs to be a part of standard requirements and testing procedures. Code reviews should be conducted by a test team to look for vulnerabilities such as buffer overflows and backdoors. For security reasons, it is not a good idea to subcontract development work to third parties. Question 19. Why is 802.11 wireless more of a security problem than any other type of network? Answer. Wireless is typically less secure because it uses radio waves for transmission. In other words, you have your data floating in airspace which makes it more susceptible to being compromised, hacked. With a wired connection someone cannot steal your data frames packets unless they physically connect to the network cabling. Additionally, the level of security built into wireless technology is less advanced than that of wired networks. This is mainly due to the fact that 802.11 is a relatively newer protocol standard. Manufacturers, both hardware and software, are developing better security for wireless systems and it is possible to harden the security of a WLAN by using the current security protocols along with using some third-party software. For additional specific information read the RFC standards for 802.11. Question 20. How are you monitoring for Trojans and backdoors? Answer. In addition to periodic vulnerability scanning, outgoing traffic should be inspected before it leaves the network, looking for potentially compromised systems. Organizations often focus on traffic and attacks coming into the network and forget about monitoring outgoing traffic. Not only will this detect compromised systems with Trojans and backdoors, but it will also detect potentially malicious or inappropriate insider activity. Question 21. What types of IDSs does your organization use? Answer. To provide the best level of detection, an organization should use a combination of both signature-based and anomaly-based intrusion detection systems. This allows both known and unknown attacks to be detected. The IDSs should be distributed throughout the network, including areas such as the internet connection, the DMZ, and internal networks. Question 22. How does an encryption help security of a network? Answer. One of the key objectives of computer security is confidentiality. Information is only available to those who are supposed to have access to it. Encryption helps protect confidentiality of information transmitted over a network by if it works as intended, making it difficult or impossible for someone who is not authorized to have the information to make sense of it if they intercept the information in transit. In cases of data stored on a network, if it is stored in encrypted form, it can make it difficult or impossible for an attacker to get anything useful from the encrypted file. Question 23. How can an operating systems help administrators control a network and manage security? Answer. To be able to manage and control a network properly, your computer would have to have server preferences. 
Server operating systems such as Microsoft Server 2008 can be used for security management over a network, but requires a fair bit of insight to operate and are mostly used by IT professionals only. Group policy controls, an advanced firewall with by-the-minute updates, network access protection, network policy and access system. Windows 7 has a few network security capabilities built in. Question 24. How often are you performing vulnerability scanning? Answer. An organization should be performing vulnerability scanning as often as possible, depending on the size of the network. The scanning should be scheduled to allow adequate time to review the reports, discover anything that has changed, and mitigate the vulnerability. Question 25. How often are your systems patched? Answer. Systems should be patched every time a new patch is released. Many organizations don't patch regularly and tend to not patch critical systems because they don't want to risk downtime. However, critical systems are the most important to patch. You must schedule regular maintenance downtime to patch systems. As vulnerabilities are discovered, attackers often release exploits even before system patches are available. Therefore, it is imperative to patch systems as soon as possible. Question 26. What is availability for IA security? Answer. One of the basic themes of IA is that it is composed of three principles, which have the memorable acronym KIA, C equals confidentiality, only those who should be able to see the data can see it. I equals integrity, the data is only changed by those authorized to change it and is not being corrupted accidentally or intentionally. A equals availability. Ability. Users can access the data when they want to or need to. Question 27. What are the specific threats to your organization? Answer. In addition to identifying the critical business systems and processes, it is important to identify the possible threats to those systems as well as the organization as a whole. You should consider both external and internal threats and attacks using various entry points, wireless, malicious code, subverting the firewall, etc. Once again, this will assist in implementing the appropriate security protections and creating business continuity and disaster recovery plans. Question 28. How does symmetric key encryption work? Answer. Symmetric encryption requires that both parties, sender and receiver, know and have the exact same encryption key. This key is used both for encrypting and decrypting the data. Using the same encryption algorithm means that only those individuals that know or have the same key will be able to read any messages encrypted by the symmetric key. Question 29. What physical security controls are in place in your organization? Answer. Physical security is a large area that must be addressed by an organization. Examples of physical controls includes physical access controls, signs, locks, security guards, badges, pins, bag search, scanning, metal detectors, CCTV, motion detectors, smoke and water detectors, and backup power generators. Question 30. Is standalone computer secure? Answer. Of course viruses can be spread through floppy disks, USB keys or other methods so being a standalone computer not connected to any network doesn't mean the computer cannot be infected though the information cannot be leaked via the network to external persons. However, there is also physical security of the computer itself, and that where it gets interesting depending on who and what you're trying to secure the PC from. If for instance the PC is sitting in a public area, and you are not worried just about external threats but also potential employee data theft then one should assume no information on the PC is secure even if the PC is standalone. 